In this webinar, I am going to cover about uh, or talk about four different topics. We're going to talk about setting up an eBay account and PayPal account. We're going to talk about eBay's feedback system. And we're going to talk about what to sell as you get started on eBay. And then finally, we are going to discuss the topic of mindset and getting out of your comfort zone so that you can grow. These important topics will help you build eBay the best way possible for long-term success for your business. And I hope that's what you're looking for and expecting is long-term success. So let's jump right into it and start with discussing a little bit about setting up eBay and PayPal. Um, I'm going to briefly touch on these topics. We do not need to get into extreme detail for, for this, but if you go to eBay.com, we're on eBay's uh, homepage right here. You see eBay.com in the address bar up there. You'll see right above the eBay logo an option to either sign in or register. If you already have an account on eBay, use your existing account. Any history you have with eBay is beneficial and good to, uh, to, to use. So don't set up a new account if you already have one. It'll be far more beneficial to use an existing account. And you'll understand a little bit more about why as we continue talking today about feedback. However, if you do need to register an account, then you'll just click on register here at the top. And when this comes up, notice we have create an account and right underneath have a business, create a business account. And so you can click on that create a business account and create an account for your business. Asking for a legal business name, but if you don't have that set up yet, you can just put in your own name or any name you want to make up. This can be changed at any time, okay? Legal business email, that's just your email address, doesn't have to be anything special. You'll re-enter it, you'll create a password, and you'll enter your phone number. And then you'll enter the little caption numbers down there. And that's all it takes to register a business. Now, if you are already registered on eBay and you want to just change to a business, then you can go up here to My eBay and click on that. The page that you see might look a little different than my page based on the different account types that you might have. But uh, you should come to a page where you have uh, an eBay summary and you'll have tabs in here like activity, messages, and account. And that's what we're looking for is the eBay account. Okay. I don't think that shows up uh, under the my eBay section here. Yeah, we don't have that up here anywhere. All of those links will go somewhere else. But uh, if you click on, actually click my eBay or summary, you'll come to this page or something like this page. It may look a little different to you. Don't let that scare you off. All you're looking for is a link that says account, and it'll usually be at the top and usually on the left-hand side here like this one. When you click on account, if, you're, if you have a personal account or an individual account, whoa, that looks way different uh, than what I normally see on uh, users. So yours will look a little different, but you'll have something on the side of your personal information or business info. And uh, if it says personal information, then you'll click on it and it will take you to a screen like this. Here's more of the old screen that I'm used to. This is what I was expecting to see on that last one. So it's interesting, um, and I'm going to get on a little tangent here about eBay. They change so often. This is an older looking page that has been there for many, many years. And at some point they decided we need to update. We need to make it look different. And so they gave you this page, right? So here's a My eBay page. Notice that, My eBay. But that's not where I go when I click My eBay, right? So this page looks a little totally different than that previous page. It has the same info, just in different places. And then this page over here is yet another <laughs> My eBay page, the summary. Um, so a little bit of a, a, a tangent, a little bit of a, you know, one of my pet peeves with eBay is they, they make everything so different. The page is very similar to the stuff on this page and on this page uh, here. So why not just make one page and leave it alone, right? But they don't do that. They're often, they're always changing. So once you get to this page where you have account information, apologize for that tangent there you'll see account type. If your account type is business, you're all set. If your account type is individual or personal, then you're gonna come over here to the right and you'll have an option to edit. It's not showing here for me to edit that, but that's, that's what you'll have and you'll click edit and you'll be able to upgrade to a business account, okay? 
So business account is a very good idea for you as you get started with eBay. Now let's talk a little bit about eBay's feedback. And uh, I'm gonna do a, a search here for an example. In fact, let's just do a search for iPhone right here. So when we search for a product like this, like the iPhone, Okay, and we come in and uh, we want to buy an iPhone. And of course, I probably won't find uh, the perfect uh, example here to show you, but uh, when somebody likes to shop on eBay, when uh, we have a buyer who consistently shops on eBay, one of the things they look for is seller's reputation. Now just think about uh, how many times we go to search for a product or service. Uh, it can be, uh, um, Actually, we could do a search like this, just to give you an example, auto repair. So if I do a search for auto repair, I'm gonna have all these results come up on maps, right? Google Maps. And one of the things that you notice here is they all have these stars, right? And they, they have uh, 4.1 stars, 4.8 stars, 4.6, 4.7. Um, there's five stars, right? Five star review, a lot of five stars there. and. And uh, so we have all of these ratings. People are, are rating, they're giving feedback on the uh, the different individuals uh, who do auto repair. And that helps us as a consumer decide who we're comfortable with. So I could look at this and say, well, gosh, Linden Collision Center has 4.7 stars uh, with 49 uh, results and they're close to me. That sounds pretty good. I, you know, I'm, that, that's uh, somebody I'd like to do business with, right? And so if I only want to work with five-star companies, then I would come down here and say, you know what? They've only got four, but they're all five-star. That's the kind of person I want to work with. That's the company that's going to get my business. So as consumers, we look at those ratings. eBay has a similar rating system. When they started their platform, they started with the idea of allowing buyers and sellers to come together at, at an online auction or, or yard sale type um, platform and be able to sell to one another and buy from one another. But they wanted to have a, a rating system to keep everybody safe. So if somebody uh, came in, sold an item and then didn't deliver or didn't deliver the right item or something like that, then uh, a buyer was able to give negative feedback to that seller, which would basically give that that negative point so that others who come in could be warned and see hey this person might not be legit and you know maybe not somebody we want to work with now in that early days uh, those early days of uh, ebay a seller was also able to give negative feedback to a buyer that has since changed sellers can no longer give negative feedback to a buyer if they have a negative experience with a buyer they can report the buyer to ebay we can do that. Uh, we can talk to eBay about uh, problems with the buyer and, and uh, try to work things out that way. But eBay no longer allows a seller to give negative feedback to a buyer. Now, personally, as a seller, I feel like that was a bad move on eBay's uh, point uh, or part. Um, it took power away from the seller. It uh, gives too much power to the uh, consumer uh, where they can basically hold the you know over the head of the uh the seller and so as sellers we have to work a little harder we have to to do everything you know as perfect as possible and that's just kind of the world we're in uh today but uh anyway that's neither here nor there we can't change it it's it's the way things are so what we want is feedback scores behind our name so i i pulled up this example because i thought it might be somebody who doesn't have a high feedback they do have 44 and it is 100 percent positive so that's good um, and 44 isn't bad, but what if you're brand new and you sign up and you've got a username there and you have a zero right here behind your name? So a zero is an indication that you have not received any feedback, which doesn't necessarily mean that you're not trustworthy. It might just mean, well, in most cases it does mean that you just haven't had an opportunity to get out there and sell anything yet. But in the buyer's mind, that's a concern. They see a big fat zero there and they worry about whether you're legit, whether you're gonna be trustworthy, whether you're gonna send the item, whether you're gonna make a mistake, whether you know what you're doing, right? All these worries could pop into their mind. And so they might back out and say, well, I don't wanna buy that person. I wanna go find somebody who has a high feedback score and buy from them. So they might come back out here 
click on another listing and they look at this person, they say, whoa, 305,940 feedback. There's somebody I wanna bank. They have a huge feedback score. All right, so feedback is very important. Now, part of it is this, this perception that buyers have. Having a, a higher feedback score uh, gives the perception that you know what you're doing and that you're trustworthy, and that's something that we want to uh, um, to pass on to our potential buyers. Okay, so we want that uh, um, feedback score to be uh, as high as possible. But there is another aspect to it. If a zero behind your name, and you get out there and you start really building your business, uh, you're new to it, you're going to make mistakes. I mean, let's face it, we're human, right? And there are going to be mistakes made now and then. Not every consumer, believe it or not, not every buyer is a kind, loving, caring person. There are people out there, I know it's shocking, right? There are people out there who are a bit cantankerous, who are not kind, loving, and do not care about their neighbors. There are people who, if they don't get what they want, when they want, they'll throw a tantrum. And these types of people, if you make a small, innocent mistake with a, an item, and I'll talk in a moment about what one of those mistakes might be, but if you make a simple, innocent mistake, they might get angry about that, and they're the type of person who likes to leave negative feedback, and they can come in and leave you a negative feedback. Well, guess what? If you have zero feedback, you have nothing to show there, and then you get a negative, well, now you're in the hole. Now, instead of a positive number, you have a negative one. And now it's more than just a concern for buyers and consumers. Now eBay is going to step in and they're going to freeze your account because they don't want to see that. Having a negative before you've even gotten any positives is a very bad thing. So it's it's very detrimental to your account. If you get if you have 2,000 feedback or even 20 feedback and you get a negative, you go down from 20 to, to 19. Not a big deal. eBay is not going to be all that concerned about it. They're not going to freeze your account. But if you have a zero and you go negative one, then they're going to lock your account. And I, I've seen this happen recently with a, a client who didn't work on building your feedback and ran into this problem. And what happened is uh, she was then unable to change or edit any of the listings. So she couldn't change them to something that might sell better. She couldn't add any new listings. And so there was, there was really nothing she could do as a seller to improve that feedback. The only way she could change that negative was to go out and purchase items from other people and get a positive from them. And so I would recommend that in the beginning, as you're starting your business, be proactive. Go out and, and anything you're planning on buying anyway, if you buy granola bars, guess what? You can buy granola bars on eBay. And so go buy them on eBay instead of at the grocery store, and you have a potential of getting a feedback. Now, it's not a guaranteed feedback. Not everybody leaves feedback, but we have a, uh, an opportunity to get feedback. What if we want to, you know, what if you don't eat granola bars? Anything you're buying for it here. You might even find Cheerios on eBay. Look at that. There's some Cheerios you can buy on eBay. Okay, so whatever you are thinking of buying anyway, do it on eBay, and you have a potential of getting um, some feedback. Now, here's another tip for you. You can go out on eBay and search just about anything and change it to price plus shipping lowest first under the sort, and look at low-priced items. Look at that. There's Clint Bauer Cheerios Poker Chip, 99 cents. All right, well, can we find other things for 99 cents uh, or lower? What about uh, a um, key ring? Okay, we can do a search for key ring, lowest first. Look at that, a penny. We can place bids on these from China. And by the way, most likely these guys, the only thing they're doing, they're selling these one cent items and shipping them and sending them out as a lost site to build their feedback. That's all they're doing. 
they're selling thousands of these items so they can build up thousands of feedback so that they look good and then they can go out and sell things that are making them money and they've got a reputation built with that feedback. They're smart sellers. They know what they're doing. So you can sell penny items. Uh, and don't worry if you're if you're taking a loss. In fact, one of the uh, the best ways to overcome your limits on eBay, because oftentimes you'll have limits when you get started. Um, and sometimes those limits are as severe as only 10 items. I've seen some uh, every once in a while where you can only list five items. The quickest way to overcome those limits is to have sales history. The easy, easiest way to get sales history is to sell 10 or however many items they let you list for a penny a piece. So go buy a packet of trading cards, open them up and put each trading card as its own listing. So 10 separate listings, if that's all they let you list, one trading card per listing, sell it uh, as an auction style listing for five days. So this way, you know, they're going to end within five days. And you're guaranteeing that they're going to sell because you're going to start them at a penny and you're going to offer free shipping. It's going to cost you a stamp, 50 cents in an envelope. Okay. Put a little bit of a uh, thin cardboard, like a cracker box or cereal box cardboard around it, wrap around it, stick it in the envelope, put the stamp on it and send it off. That way you can get some sales history and and probably gain some feedback, but you can also gain feedback by purchasing. This needs to be done as soon as possible. If you spend a, a, a few hours in your first week when you're starting to work on eBay, building your feedback, even if that means you're spending 20 or 30 bucks building your feedback, that is going to be exponential growth to your business. That is going to be huge for your business long term because you're building the feedback so that when you list other items of value, now people are paying attention to you. Now they're willing to buy from you where in before you had that feedback, they wouldn't. Not only that, but you're protecting yourself against those who decide to be mean and leave you a negative. As long as we've got some positive numbers, it doesn't matter if we get those negatives. Okay. Now, that's also a good reminder to just make sure that you are being kind as possible to everybody that you work with on eBay. Um, make sure that uh, we never make anybody uh, um, unhappy or mad about what we're doing with, uh, um, with the things we sell. Okay. So feedback, absolutely crucial. If you have an account that you've used to buy things in the past and you already have feedback, use that account. Don't set up another account. You have the history, you have the feedback, use it. Let it benefit you. If you don't, build that feedback immediately. Do not wait. This is one of the most valuable things you can do to help your um, eBay business as you get started. All right, so now let's talk about what to sell. We've kind of discussed this a little bit, but uh, this is important because of the way eBay looks at uh, looks at you as a new seller, uh, the way they look at uh, sellers today. eBay's been around for over 25 years. They've been around a long time. They've learned a lot. They've grown in their business. Uh, they haven't grown because they're stupid. They've grown because they're smart. They know what they're doing. They've built a good business. They've built a great platform and a great marketplace for us. Well, over those years that they've been in business, they have had some unscrupulous folks come in and try to take advantage of their marketplace. They've had people come in and list thousands of dollars of items, sell those items, take the money, and not ship anything. Close their bank account, bank account and run. And that leaves a sour taste in people's mouth, doesn't it? It's not something we want to have happen to us as consumers. And uh, it's not the, the reputation that eBay wants to have either. And so they've put some uh, uh, limitations in place to help prevent that. So now when somebody comes in as a brand new seller and either has had an eBay account for a while and starts selling or sets up a brand new account and starts selling, eBay is going to put limits on their account. They're going to limit the number of items you can sell so you can't list thousands of items. They're going to limit the dollar amount uh, of items that you can sell. So you can only list up to a certain dollar amount or a certain number of items, whichever comes first. Uh, and they are going to uh, um, put restrictions on uh, payments. Uh, basically, in the first uh, little while while you are starting on eBay, when somebody pays you, they're going to have those funds held in reserve until the item is delivered. And they only release that money to you once they know the item has been delivered to the buyer. That way they know you're you're not going to commit fraud. They don't allow it. 
you don't have the money. You can't take the, the money and run because you don't get it until the item has actually been delivered. Okay. And so those are some of the limitations that they put on there. Well, if you build a, uh, a good eBay doing things on the up and up and you're proving that you are a legit seller, then they will release those funds faster. They'll feel more comfortable with you. All the red flags lower. So what are those red flags? Well, in the past, when they've had fraudsters come in and list items uh, on eBay and take advantage of others, generally the way they do that is they're listing brand new popular items. And so if you come in as a brand new seller and you list brand new items and popular items, well, guess what? That's a red flag for eBay because that's what all the fraudsters have done, right? And so that is going to be a concern for them. And it's going to be an instant red flag where they're going to be uh, um, worried about who you are. They're going to put some limitations on you, maybe uh, scrutinize your account a little closer. That's a, a concern for eBay. However, if you start by selling used items that you have laying around the house, and maybe it's a key ring, maybe it's uh, um, toddler clothes, right? Uh, a lot of people will sell uh, used uh, um clothing like this right here. Um, used items are something that are sold on eBay every day. And most of the time, people who start selling on eBay, legitimate sellers over the years, eBay has seen that they often start by selling items that they no longer want. Okay. And so that will put eBay at ease. If you start by selling items that uh, um, that you don't use anymore, well, these are used items. They're they're obviously in your hand. Very uh, comfortable about that. And these actually, you can see, uh, these are new with tags. These actually have tags on them. They're they're brand new items that these people probably bought at a discount rather than than used. I've sold a lot of bagels over the years on eBay, and they they sell real well in lots like that. So, um, selling used items is one of the fastest ways to gain the confidence of eBay when you're getting started. So don't be afraid to start your business where you are. Use what you have. Maybe it's not uh, um, toddler clothes. Maybe it's uh, um, books. You know, maybe it's a pocket book, right? Um, that's generally not going to be your title, of course, but, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe it's, uh, maybe you have a Clive Cussler that you're not going to read again, right? And so we put a Clive Cussler book up for sale on eBay, and we sell it. Um, here we've got one on CD. Maybe you've got a book on CD, okay? And so maybe we'll sell a whole lot. So those kinds of items, uh, um, books, used clothing, used shoes, old purses, old belts, that stuff will sell on eBay. And so get out there, list something that you have, get the practice, let that build up your reputation. Uh, that will improve your reputation with eBay and with uh, with sellers. It will help you have the possibility of uh, receiving some of that feedback, give you the practice. There are a lot of positive things that can come from that. Now, I know uh, a lot of people get squirmy about this, and uh, uh, this, this falls into one of those areas of uh, mindset. Uh, I've talked to so many people over the years who simply are not willing. They're dead set against selling something that they have to handle or touch. And I'll tell you what, bottom line, if that's you, you're going to struggle making a, a business grow. If you are not willing to do something you don't want to do, then you're going to have a more difficult time growing your business. And that's another topic that uh, that I want to discuss here, because uh, it's it's something else that is absolutely crucial to your growth. We don't grow by doing what we're comfortable with. So that's the uh, the last thing that I wanted to discuss is is comfort zone versus growth. If we want to grow, if we want to build a business, we've got to be willing to do something that we aren't necessarily comfortable with. Now, I've heard uh, uh, people say uh, nobody nobody gets rich by, you know, uh, through an online yard sale. Um, I disagree with that comment completely. 
that that's a, a falsehood. There are many people who are very wealthy from selling used items from yard sales, estate sales, um, surplus, liquidation, and uh, other such uh, um, places. There is good money to be made in it. There is very good money to be made in it. So um, that mentality, it, and it's really that it's a mindset. If you're willing to do something you're not comfortable with and allow it to let you grow, then you will grow. If you are not, as soon as you say no to something, the creative side of your brain shuts off. You're done. You you can't be creative and um um what's the word analytical or uh, um um critical at the same time. We can be either critical or creative, not both. So that's an important thing for you to get over. If you have a, a fear of, of handling products or listing products, we're going to call it fear. You know, if you have a, an aversion to that, you don't want to do that. Just know that that could be holding you back from growing. I'm not saying that that's all you're ever going to do. And I hope you understand that. That's, that's not at all what I'm saying. But if that's where you start and it helps you gain a reputation, it helps you put eBay at ease so that they allow you to do more, why wouldn't you do it? It allows your business to grow. Then we can move on to bigger and better things. You can start mixing in some dropship while you're still doing a few used items. eBay will be very comfortable with that. Okay. So um, let's uh, let's go to a question that I have right here that uh, that might be helpful. How can you get people to leave you feedback when you sell something? Uh, do we leave a message uh, um, in our item detail? All right. So. In uh, your listing, you could state how important feedback is and how valuable it is and, and say, we hope that you you can't ask for feedback and you can't ask for five-star feedback in your listing. You can say, we hope that you feel this was a five-star transaction and if you don't, please let us know so that we can fix any problems that occur. You can say something like that. After you receive payment, you can send a message to the buyer and tell them, I'm trying to build my business. Feedback is extremely important for me. I hope that you feel that I've treated you fairly and that it's worth leaving me positive feedback. If so, will you please leave me some positive feedback so I can grow this as a business? There's nothing wrong with stating something like that and asking for people to leave positive feedback, but you can only go so far. Now, in my experience, you will see somewhere between 5 to 10% of the people who buy from you leaving feedback. Most people just don't bother with it, okay? Think about it yourself. Uh, when you go to a store, most of those receipts have a survey on them. Now, some of them offer something free or a chance to win something if you fill out the survey, but do you fill out every single survey at every single place you go to? Most likely you don't. I don't. You know, I know every once in a while I'll do it, and if they give me an incentive of possibly, you know, free food or something, then yeah, I'll, I'll be more likely to fill it out. So just keep that in mind. Most people aren't going to leave feedback, so we might have to go out and buy 20 or 30 items so that we can get five or 10 feedback as a, a buyer. We might have to sell 10 items so that we can get um, perhaps, uh, you know, three to five feedback as a as a seller right? But do what you can to, to build that feedback, ask for it when you can, and then be patient. Be patient, be uh, be grateful for what you have, and, and act like uh, it's there. All right, so in review, what we've talked about uh, in this uh, uh, important webinar is the importance of setting up our eBay account as a business account, um, the importance of feedback and building positive feedback as a seller, and what you should sell as you get started on eBay. And then a little bit of mindset, stretching that comfort zone, being willing to do something uh, that you're not comfortable with in the beginning so that you can grow your business into where you will be comfortable later on. Um, setting up your eBay as a business will allow you to do more with, uh, within eBay and overcome the restrictions and limitations faster. And it does not require that you have a legal business entity before you start. Okay, you can go ahead and, and call it a, a business account without having that legally set up. We can change that and update it later. Um, building your feedback so that you have a good reputation is extremely important for you to get the sales faster and to build these, uh, uh, build the feedback uh, 
or I'm sorry, to build the, the confidence of eBay. Uh, and then they'll let you uh, do more. And then it also protects you against possible negative uh, feedback that might come from cantankerous buyers, right? Uh, and then uh, being willing to sell something uh, used, something of your own, uh, something that you can get your hands on cheap, uh, inexpensive, um, in the beginning of your business, uh, even as you start adding dropship items in perhaps, uh, is also going to put eBay at ease and make them feel more comfortable about who you are and um, what you're doing on their selling platform. And uh, will have the added bonus of giving you some additional practice and allowing you to grow in your business. Ultimately, uh, you will only grow in your business when you are stretching and doing something that you are uncomfortable with. That's where growth comes from. Growth doesn't come from being comfortable. Growth doesn't come from doing what we've always done. Growth comes from doing something different, and usually it's got to be uncomfortable in order to, to see growth. If we only allow ourselves to do what we're comfortable with, we will generally only receive what we already have. And if you're not happy with that and you wanna grow, then you must get out of your comfort zone, okay? So I hope this has been valuable for you. I hope that uh, you see this as uh, uh, relatable and, and uh, encouraging. Uh, I wanna help you grow your business. It is vital that you do these things in order to see great success. And the sooner you do it, the faster you'll see success. So get out there, start building your business properly.